So um, let me introduce you for a second. Okay, so um, Tad is a licensed professional counselor. He's a coach, he's an author, and he is a musician. I love that combination, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you help people master their mental health and well being by learning simple yet powerful habits and overcoming limiting beliefs. Wow. You also are an EMDEA trained and specialized in working with men. And Tad, um, you are living in Colorado. You love the outdoors, reading, meditation, guitar, and uh, spending time with your family. I love that. You know, of all those things that you identify with, right? When you say about, I'd love to hear a little more about who you are. So of all those things which you said, right? Being a counselor, being an author, a musician, which one do you identify most, most with? Which one is close to your heart? Yeah, that's really tough to say. It might be, um, you know, it might be a, somewhat of a tie between being a counselor and a musician. And, and actually, um, funny enough, there's more similarities than you might think um, in terms of having to, both, both of those have really an art and a science to them. And, um, you know, balancing both, the, you know, you have to bring some creativity and some improvisation and some different things um to those different fields but yeah they're both really uh kind of core um to my well-being for sure i love it i love it when you look at um men's mental health because that's what we're going to all talk about mental fitness and mental health for men why are you so passionate about it what is what is that why why do you think it's so important i love it yeah man and that you are paying attention to this but i would love to hear your story about that sure sure yeah um you know, so number one, as a male who knows what it's like to have mental health or mental, you know, uh, mental and emotional challenges, I many years ago, um, when I was, a, I guess, a younger, younger man, uh, in my teens and in 20s, I really, um, I struggled with depression a lot, but I didn't know that that's what it was. And so for the longest time, I thought that there was just, there's just something wrong with me, right. And I think a lot of men um, are underserved in a lot of ways when it comes to the mental health conversation and when it comes to really developing mental wellness or maybe what, what we would call mental fitness, right? Which is kind of maintaining good health um, and maintaining, you know, being able to know what brings you joy in life, um, know how to heal yourself, know how to um, really become more whole. And I think that, uh, again, it, as there's a lot of factors with this, you know, social conditioning, um, you know, and kind of who we've been brought up to be, what we've been taught is acceptable or not acceptable, what our role is as men. Um, we tend to be very self-reliant, very um, stoic. And sometimes those are the things that actually really get in the way of connecting and um, having meaningful relationships and also being able to seek help when we need it. So for me, when I was young, it took me a long time to kind of really seek out that help because I just assumed. And then when I found out, oh, this is actually a thing that I'm dealing with called depression and here's how I can treat it and develop it. Um, that was just, at the time for me, that was really opened my mind. And I realized like, wow, this is, you know, and a lot of men that I work with now, um, d you know, don't realize that, that, hey, you know, it's, it doesn't define you. This isn't, you know, who you are. This is just a something you're dealing with understandably because you know um it's a difficult <laughs> it's especially now it's a difficult time for a lot of people that we're living in um so yeah it's, it kind of comes from just that desire to really want to help you know men realize that um you know there's there's some unique barriers that we face in getting help but it doesn't need to be that way so sorry go ahead that? no it's okay but i'm curious about it when you said you, how did you find out that that actually had a name. How, what was that discovery process for you? Because I think that's important for also younger men to know as well, right? And, and, but any men of any ages, how was that for you? How did you make that switch? Like, oh, this is something that's actually going on, right? Versus I'm just feeling sad. Yeah, I think it was when I finally decided to, you know, hey, I'm really struggling trying to figure this out on my own. Um, and I was like, I, there was one day when I finally decided, okay, I'm just going to pick up the phone and like start trying to find a counselor or somebody that can help me, right? A professional. Um, so once I got into that process and started having some dialogue about things um, and then seeking out some resources, you know, books and 
articles online and different things like that and kind of that process of self-discovery um that's when i sort of had that light bulb of realizing that like you just said oh this is a thing that i'm dealing with it's not just a just a flaw that i have as a person um and likewise realizing that there were certain thoughts um, that i was having that were really um kind of detrimental but that i just didn't question before when i realized like that my thoughts didn't have to define me either that oh maybe these are just thoughts that i'm having that might be not accurate um that are you know are telling me these sort of self-defeating messages but when i really stopped to examine them um realizing that oh there's a lot of flawed thinking that i'm doing and it's it's and i can change that um so likewise that was kind of the switch realizing that you know the thoughts i'm having don't define me what i'm feeling doesn't define me it's just an experience i'm having and there are ways that i can shape and mold that and change that hmm. wow and so then you went to becoming a counselor right mm -hmm. and and working with men um any particular kind of men you're working with or any kind it's any kind of men at this point yeah really men of all ages i've and i should say that when i um started out for several years i worked with all kinds of different people uh, men and women and, and i do still work with women too um but yeah for the last few years I, i've been really kind of um really specializing with working with men um but yeah a lot of um everything from from young adults you know teens to um people and you know i i just actually finished up working with a client who's in his 70s you know and and who really made some amazing strides in his uh mental health and being able to to sort of handle anger better and better understand himself and things like that um yes yeah, so really really all ages i love that that's amazing if you would define three major struggles of men right now and and maybe one or two things they can do about it and and i'm just throwing this on you i know but if there's something you can identify for for men specifically what what struggles do you really see like three main struggles for men that you see them struggling with right now uh we're, we're just coming through COVID, right we have a lot of things going on a lot of stress going on what what do you see for this modern for the modern men right now what what is it going on yeah that's a great question um I think one is isolation um, and sort of a feeling of lack of connection, whether that be socially or otherwise. Um, and some of that has been worsened by COVID, of course, um, or just exacerbated by that, you know. Um, another, I think, is is kind of a stigma and, and a longstanding. Um, and it's getting a bit better, you know, obviously there's things like this happening, which is amazing. So it's getting better, but um, that a lot of men still carry stigma about what it, just asking for help and, and seeking that out and being willing to accept that. Um, and what that is, can be a barrier. What is the stigma? Can you say, because I think you know it so well, but I don't think anybody, everybody knows it that well. What's the stigma? Sure. Yeah. I think for men, um, again, this is a speaking really generally, right. But, um, at least in Western society, we've been so conditioned to, like I said, be um, to not show vulnerability, even though vulnerability is where growth happens. That's what allows us to connect. It's what it's it's where we grow, right? But we've been conditioned that that's somehow weak and that that's somehow not okay, which is just just not true. But you know, um, it's comes down to vulnerability and. Um, and, and that we're, we're taught to sort of be self-reliant problem solvers and we're taught to essentially be strong and accomplished and to show strength and to show you know be accomplished in our careers or our incomes or with women or with other you know it's and so if we're not when we are struggling because we're human and so there's going to be times in life when we're struggling um a lot of men internalize that and they feel that that they're broken or that there's something wrong with them um and as opposed to being able to just recognize that um i'm human and this is something that i need some help to navigate um so i think that's a lot of i guess where i see stigma and like i said it is getting better because the more we talk about it um you know one of my one of my sort of personal heroes fred rogers he said if something is is mentionable it's manageable in other words if we can talk about something it becomes something that we can actually deal with um and so that it's so i'm really glad there's more dialogue like this happening now but um 
you know, like I said, yeah, isolation um, has been a, a challenge for a lot of guys right now. And um, sort of spinning off of that, you know, as uh, people have struggled with their, with their mood and their, and their health overall, like, you know, substance use and, and relying on kind of the wrong coping skills, um, or I should just say unhealthy coping skills, um, you know, drinking and drugs too much, you know, um, things like that. And then that kind of exacerbating whatever other problems are going on. Um, yeah, those are big ones. And, and if you're listening and you're, and you're recognizing any of this or you uh, put it in the comments, right? Or maybe for somebody else, isolation, stigma, and then also these coping mechanisms. Um, those are really, really good, good pointers. What would you say? Um, well, you have your own practice, right? Where you help men with this. Let's make it first very, very clear. And, and guys, we are giving an, a free session away. So thank you so much for, um, for somebody who is uh, by, by commenting. So the more you comment, the more you'll have a chance to, to do this. Because I, I love it, what you're doing with men. What would you say to these men right now who are listening or their partners, right? Or their women who care in their lives? I mean, there's a lot of moms, there's a lot of wives, there's a lot of other people who care, dads who care about what's going on right now. If you look at those three points, what, what do you think are some things people can do? Can do, uh, do you mean like to, to steps they can take or that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I would say the number one biggest thing is just um, don't do your best not to allow, allow yourself to become isolated. And by that, I mean, don't close off, you know, at the tendency we have and, and women too, I think is when we're really struggling to go inward and to really close off and, and isolate, which is actually sort of the opposite of what we need to do um, to get better and to get through it. So I would say, number one, just talk to somebody, you know, I know a lot of people do feel really alone out there, but if there's anybody, even if it's just a friend or a buddy or somebody, um, you know, and even if you're not going to talk about uh, mental health struggles, you don't have to just, just keep talking and just keep engaging with people and try to stay connected as best you can. Um, that would be one of the biggest things I would say, you know, and then um, likewise, just remind yourself that it's okay. Like it's okay to, you know, as the old saying goes, not, not be okay. You know, and it's this old cliche, but it's really true um, that if you're struggling in whatever way that is, um, just remind yourself it, it's okay. It's okay to be there um, and that it's okay to, to get help and lean on people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the other thing I would encourage too is just thinking back, see if you can remember back to a time in your life when you've really felt like you were in a good place. You know, I think we've all had at least a couple moments in our life where we felt like we were just in stride, right? Where everything was just in, in the flow and going great, you were feeling good. And see if you can remember back to a time period in your life when you felt that way and what that felt like and what were you doing at that time? What were, what kind of activities were you engaging in? What were you thinking about? What, how did you see yourself? Um, and maybe see if you can try to reconnect with some, you know, some activities that used to bring you some joy or some meaning or some accomplishment or some connection, things like that. Um, the more you can kind of start getting active and, and, and getting moving and um, that can really help kind of dislodge, you know, what some of the emotional blocks and things that might, might be holding you down. Um, so just a, just a couple things right away that people can start start doing you know today um, yeah i love that i love that you know i think it's very powerful and you give very powerful messages if you um if there's there's guys who's listening right now because i know you also do coaching right and i just want to step mm -hmm. into that because if there's guys listening right now or or other people who say wow this this sounds good and i i think i need some help what do you personally provide i'd love to i'd love to talk a little more about that yeah so um thanks for that question so there's basically kind of I guess the way I see is two arms to my practice. So there's what, psychotherapy, which we might call therapy or counseling. Um, and that is um, basically the way that that works is I'm only al allowed to practice that where I'm licensed, which is in Colorado. So if you're in Colorado, we can do therapy together. And that's a little bit different, um, a little bit more, uh, I guess you could say in-depth process in some ways in the sense that we're really often 
working through past trauma and ways to heal that um, as, as well as like processing emotions and things like that. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes connecting you to other resources if that's medication management or things like that. Um, and then there's the, the coaching side of things, which is, I, you know, which we can connect from anywhere in the world to do that. Um, and that is um, similar in a lot of ways, but um, one way it's different, I would say, is it tends to be a little bit more uh, solutions focused and uh, a little bit more, you know, helping give you information and tools and strategies and kind of specific things and even kind of guidance and uh, like you say, coaching essentially like sometimes giving you kind of things to work on, things to practice, homework, so to speak, um, and really kind of help being a bit more directive and a bit more guiding um, in that way. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes too, we, we tend to be a little bit more focused on, I guess what you'd said, mental fitness or the wellness, which is like, how can I, in addition to overcoming some problems and challenges, how can I enhance joy in my life? You know, how can I enhance like my sense of confidence or my fulfillment um you know things like that so we, we tend to also focus on those types of things in in coaching and again that's the type of thing that we can do from anywhere in the world so awesome awesome well that's and that's one of the things we're giving away so guys put session down below and also any takeaways i would love to hear some takeaways that you're getting from everything we're saying right now and what's a personal tip for you um, we're also giving an ebook away. Thanks for your generosity. It's awesome. We're also giving. So I'd love to for you to tell a little bit about that ebook, what it's all about, and then um, I guess as maybe as a last wrap up, as we're getting to the end of this, is what do you see in, in the? Actually, let's talk about the ebook first. Tell us about the ebook, and I'll do the other question. What's the ebook? Sure. Called? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's called the Stress Solution for High Achievers, Perfectionists, and Busy People, and it's surprisingly simple steps to calm your mind. So. Um, I wrote it a couple years ago because I was just noticing kind of certain themes in, in my work with people um, about what people were saying about just feeling overwhelmed, not being able to turn off the thoughts in their mind, feeling chronically stressed, that turning into anxiety. Um, and there were some, again, surprisingly simple strategies that we could employ um, that I really compiled into this ebook and it's structured in such a way that uh, the first half of it is uh, is called Back to Basics, and it's really about each chapter's different sort of life hack, essentially a different um, you know strategies that you can start putting in place day to day that are immediately going to going to dissolve a lot of stress and eliminate a lot of stress from your life um, from the equation. Um, and then the second section is called Master Your Mindset, and that's really about um, so more of those mental uh, strategies and kind of practices that you can do again on a day-to-day week-to-week that uh you know how to change the internal dialogue um that's causing you to be stressed and anxious and really putting those things together so you can live a lifestyle that's more supportive of just feeling calm peaceful grounded uh that sort of thing so each chapter kind of builds on the next in terms of the skills um and uh yeah so it's kind of a kind of the whole uh, solution to, to, to high stress and anxiety. I love it. And you're right, that is going more into mental fitness, which I love to, and we'll talk way more about that this week as well. So um, yeah. thanks so much for coming on, Ted. I have loved talking to you. Um, guys, please put in the comments and we'll also put your information in there so people can connect with you. And if they want, we're going to give one free ebook away, but if they want to purchase the ebook, that we'll put the link and everything else in there too. I am Perfect. curious. Um, what do you see in the future? What do you see in the future for men's mental health as we're, as we're getting more comfortable, as we're getting less isolated, right? Let's assume we're going that way because we need to go that way. What do you see there? What is your, what's your thought about that? Men's mental health and mental fitness for the future. Yeah, I, I think we're in a lot of ways going through a real revolution in, uh, I guess we could just broadly say personal wellness, but especially for men, when it comes to mental fitness and mental wellness. Um, you know, I think I'm an optimist, so I, I just see things to continue to really grow in terms of the amount of information out there, the amount of resources, um, and the normalizing of um, the importance of mental health is just, just as important as your physical health, right? And, and we all try to, most of us want to be in good shape, you know, and we, we 
have uh, effort, you know, make efforts at that. And, um, and I really see eventually it's going to be the mind is, it's going to be just another one of those areas. It's just essential that people, ex, you know, accept that this is a, a part of just being a healthy person and really being able to show up, you know, well for your, for your spouse or your uh, partner or your kids or your friends, whoever. Um, so yeah, I really see it becoming just a lot more common, a lot more mainstream. Um, and a lot of men really getting it and really making progress in that regard and, and helping others too. So that's kind of, kind of my vision or what I see. Nice. And hopefully we'll teach it to the children as well, right? Maybe we'll start that yeah. at basic level, right? I love that. I love that. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else you want to end with for today? Any kind of other tips or ideas? I know you shared a whole lot with us and I'm so grateful for all you shared. And like I said, guys, please get in touch. The more I get to know you, we only, we haven't met for that long, but the more I see what you're doing, the more I'm really impressed with how much you're helping men and, and with your ebook, with your work, with your coaching. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed by what you're doing and it's so needed. It's, it really is so needed. So thank you. Any other last minute words before we finish? Well, th thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for, for having me. This was awesome. And, uh, yeah, um, if people want to learn more, um, in addition to to my website, I think what you said, you'll provide a link to that. But um, they can also go to my Facebook group, which is called Mental Health Mastery. Um, and that's a, a group that I've recently started where um, really the goal to, to provide uh, tools and strategies and information and resources and, and just like a, a positive dialogue around mental health. Um, so I'm always, you know, seeking to just again, provide helpful resources for people in that group that they can take and use and to um, kind of help themselves um, in their daily life. So, so yeah, it's called Mental Health Mastery Facebook group. So feel free to join there and, um, and uh, yeah, we'll be continue growing and, and learning in there. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll also put that link in the bottom. But um, guys, thanks so much. And thanks so much, Tan, again, for coming on for everybody else. Please, um, this, this, if you see this on my personal page, the next interview will not be here. It will be in the Mental Fitness Movement uh, Facebook group. So please join there, find us. We'll also put a link in here and join, actually ask some people to join this. If you now know somebody who could hear this, please come and join us because we have a whole week of high performance coaches. Um, we have another psych nurse practitioner coming on, a uh, Tony Robbins coach. We have so many people coming on. So, uh, Tad, you're in very good company, and thanks again for today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it.